This video demonstrates techniques that require the use of dangerous tools. Always follow the manufacturer's safety guidelines for each individual tool and always wear appropriate protection. Soundcube is not responsible for any injuries caused by the misuse of any tools. Now, depending on the model of your subwoofer, your recone kit will include the following items. Cone, voice coil assembly, paper dust cap, string, fighter spacer screws, mylar shim sheets, craft sticks, heat shrink, and some cotton swabs. In order to pull off this repair, you will probably need some of the following tools. Cyano acrylic glue kit with activator, paper towels, isopropyl alcohol, a rag, padded weight, big clamps, dikes, digital multimeter, flashlight, heat gun, needle nose pliers, three millimeter Allen wrench, exacto knife, solder iron, turntable, pistol grip blowgun, utility knife, chisel, hammer, electric grinder, pneumatic grinder, duct tape. Now let's get started. First off, this is not a clean frame. So grab your duct tape and make your frame look like this. We want to mine the gap and prevent any debris from entering. Then grab your tools and make Make your frame look like this. Warning, grinding cyanoacrylic glue stings the nostrils, so wear a breather. If your woofer uses push terminals, then now is a good time to prepare them for reuse. Cut off a heat shrink, melt the solder, and gently pull out the tinsel wire. Now let's recone this woofer. Next, check the gap for debris. If you see you need debris, fish it out with some duct tape or blow it out with an air compressor. Next, cover the spider landing holes with some tape. Place your voice coil assembly on a flat surface and figure out how much mylar to use. Once you have the mylar sized up, test fit the voice coil over the pole piece. If it fits, then wipe down the spider landing with a rag and some alcohol. And apply a thin bead of glue around the circumference of the spider landing. Grab your voice coil assembly and seat it back down into the motor. On any woofer, make sure that your lead wires end up in the frame spot opening with the wire tabs. If your coil assembly has a plastic spacer ring and screws, be sure to line the holes up. Now go ahead and secure the spider ring to the frame with the provided screws. We recommend installing at least two screws across from each other first to ensure proper alignment. If your coil assembly doesn't use rings, then use the clamps we mentioned earlier to hold down the spiders. After the coil assembly is sat under pressure for at least 30 seconds, give it a light mist of activator and let it cure for another 30 seconds. While the glue is drying, go ahead and secure your direct leads into the wire tabs, or in our case, solder your tinsel wire into the terminals. Be sure to put your heat shrink on the tinsel leads before soldering. After you've soldered the terminals, check the impedance with your meter. If everything checks out, go ahead and clip away any excess wire and shrink up that heat shrink. Careful not to apply heat directly on the spider or the spider spacer ring, as this can cause permanent damage. Now grab your cone and test fit it over the voice coil. Line up the silver lines and make sure it's touching the coil, but it's loose enough to bounce back into its natural resting position. Now clean the surround lantern with some isopropyl, wait for it to evaporate, and then apply a thin bead of glue where the surround will sit. Install the cone, making sure it's nice and centered on the lamp. You can clamp the lip down or press the surround to the frame with your fingers. Also, be careful not to get stuck to the surround or you might rip it. After the glue is soaked for at least 30 seconds, give it a misting with your activator on the top and the bottom. After your activator is set for another 30 seconds, gently check for good adhesion around the surround. If some spots didn't stick down so well, hit it with a tiny amount of activator and hold it down with your fingers. Next, inspect the spiders to ensure that they are leveled in their natural resting position. Now apply a small amount of activator to the area where the cone and coil meet. Apply a thin bead of glue to the innermost inch or so of the cone and about half an inch of the coil form. Be sure to inspect the underside of the cone for glue that may have dripped. If glue has dripped, wipe it away with a cotton swab. Now grab your string and apply activator to the tips. Place one end of the string in the glue so it's touching both the cone and the coil. Carefully wrap the string around the glue joint, making sure it's seated all the way around. Be sure not to press too hard as this can misalign the cone. Once again, inspect the underside for glue drip. Next, apply a thin coat of glue over the entire string. You'll know you've used the right amount when you can see the glossy surface of the glue take on the braided texture of the string. After the glue is soaked for at least 30 seconds, apply a small amount of activator to the glue. Allow the glue to cure until it has reached room temperature. At this time, a gasket can be installed. After the cone joint glue has reached room temperature, you may remove the mylar sheets and power test your woofer. Always power test your woofer before applying the dust cap as this will prevent you from leaving any mylar shins inside of it. Next, place your dust cap on the cone and center it. Once centered, place a weight on the dust cap and trace around it with a pencil. Remove the weight and dust cap and lay down a very thin bead of glue on the inside of your guideline. Place a dust cap on the glue and place your weight back on top of the dust cap. Depending on the model of your woofer, the dust cap may require a backfill. If so, apply a bead of glue in the crease below the lip of the dust cap. After you're satisfied with your backfill, apply a light amount of activator. Congratulations! You successfully recombed your sound cube woofer.